part two of the tonight's show, IB Nation Sports Talk Show, Trevor, is going to be, we're going to talk a little bit about Marcus Freeman's press conference today, and we'll talk about a couple different aspects that he discussed. But the one interesting thing is there is a very clear, Trevor, and you wrote an article about uh, about this. You have another one that will be coming out here either later tonight or tomorrow um, about his his you know, his comments on the press conference, and you and I both watched it, it was very clear that he's trying to let his team know, hey, guys, this is not a team to be taken lightly. I don't care what their record is. Um, it, it's very clear that he it looks at it and says, hey, we can't sleepwalk through this game. We've got to be ready for this game. There were multiple things that he said that made it very obvious. Now, I, whether or not he'll be able to get it done is – We'll we'll see Friday night or Saturday night around seven, you know, about eight o'clock, eight thirty. We'll have a really good idea uh, if he was able to do it. But he's very clearly focused on, hey, guys, we cannot take this team lightly. And he knows the record. He knows how bad the film is going to look to some degree. But he was very, very focused on in this game, more so than I've ever seen him of we cannot. Like this is a much better team than you think it is. I don't know that I've ever seen him push that angle so many. He, he wasn't going to, he was like, I'm not going to sit there and try to tell him, you know, something that's not true. You know, he he was, obviously there's some issues there, but guys, this is a talented football team. It's a talented football team that you can't overlook because this could, you know, this, this could be the kind of game that helps them salvage their season to some degree. He's got to make sure his team is ready for that. I thought that was a very interesting take, the manner in which he was kind of aggressively and rightly going down that path. If there was one common theme from today's press conference, it was preparation. It was mental and physical preparation. A lot of the questions that were being asked and a lot of the topics that were being discussed was around, you know, know, when you look at the schedule at the beginning of the year, Florida State's ranked 10th, and there's a lot of magnitude coming into this game. Now with them sitting at 1-8, and what does this game kind of look like for you guys? And Marcus Freeman was very quick to say, look, it's got to be frustrating for a head coach like Mike Norbell, right? Looking at that roster and seeing how much skill you have, but not getting the results that you want. Marcus Freeman was very quick to comment on how athletic and how talented the team is despite their record. And that is something that I was very interested in, Brian, to your point. I'm I'm glad that he brought it up because, I mean, even us as fans, even I, like, you know, buddies talk to me all the time. Hey, who's Notre Dame have this weekend? I, I I've caught myself on that at Florida State. You know what I mean? Yes. Well, we've had those conversations, Trevor. Yeah. Like, oh, my gosh, what they should or shouldn't do to this football team this year. Because yeah. we're watching the games live, and we're like, oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's – and unfortunately for Florida State, their season so far has been nothing short of a disaster, right? But Marcus Freeman brought up something that I thought was very interesting, and it was around mental preparation. And he talked about how this team has witnessed – what happens when you don't prepare properly mentally and reference the NIU game? He said that he reminds his players all the time about, listen, if we don't prepare, these teams come to beat you. What's Florida State looking for? They're one and only ranked win of the season. They're looking to knock you out of the playoffs. They're looking for anything to build momentum going into 2025. And Marcus Freeman sounds like from, from the sound of the press conference – I know sometimes head coaches can get up there and give a little bit of coach speak, right? You know, mm-hmm. and to some degree you have to when you're preparing for an opponent that's one and eight and has looked the way that they do, right? But he was very sincere about this is a talented football team. I have a lot of respect for Mike Norbell. And this is a team that if you don't prepare for, it's it's going to be a four-quarter football game, which is something that Notre Dame can't afford. So I am happy that he brought up how prepared they have to be which is nice. And it sounds like this week and through the bye week, it was a lot about mental and physical preparation. Use the bye week to get a little bit healthier, rest up, do what you need to. And now they're ready and fully focused on Florida State. I wonder if part of that was also for our benefit as media and fans. You you know what I mean? Like, I wonder if part of that was like, hey, guys, (laughs) you know, don't treat this team like, like, you know, I'm just trying to think of some, this isn't Mississippi state. You know what I mean? Like this isn't, this isn't Kent state's not coming to town. Akron's not coming to town this weekend. Right. Like 
although I probably shouldn't use Mac teams as an example for Notre Dame, you know, but this isn't some, this isn't some really bad football team. This isn't Florida A&M. This isn't some team that we're going to just, you know, literally could put our third string out there and beat this team by three touchdowns. You, you know what I mean? So uh, I, I wonder if part of that was kind of for us, you know, like, Hey, can you guys please not just say that we have to beat them by 40 or I'm a bad coach, you know, cause there's going to be some people out there that do that, you know, but I, I really did think it was interesting, Trevor, that, that he, he really started it off that way and, and, and brought it up multiple times. And, and to a degree, like like you and I are going to talk a lot more about the Florida State game tomorrow, so we're not going to preview the game so much right now. But like one of the things that you and I will talk about tomorrow is, I mean, I watched that North Carolina game when I'm still and I'm watching. And I'm thinking this team is is not good right now, but man, that D line is is still talented. Man, they still flash. You know, like man, if that receiver catches that ball, he might house that thing. You know, they're bound to catch one of them. You know what I mean? Like I remember watching the Duke game. I'm thinking if that if their receivers could catch, they would have won that game. I mean, if that's the only thing that was different, and the same thing against Georgia. I mean, against North Carolina, and you're just like, gosh, you just hope this isn't the week like that you figure it all out. And I and I think that's the warning to his football team uh, coming into this game. Trevor is. Hey guys, we can't just assume this is going to be a cakewalk. We just we just can't. And and also, I think Marcus Freeman has a unique perspective on Florida State, Trevor, because he has a lot of experience with Mike Norvell, and I know that was something else that he had a lot to talk about today in the in the press conference. Yeah, Mar- Marcus Freeman has a lot of respect for Mike Norvell. So for for Notre Dame fans who don't know, this will be Marcus Freeman's fourth time. Now going against Mike Norvell, he went against them twice at Cincinnati as a defensive coordinator. Once in 2021 as Notre Dame's defensive coordinator, his first game ever as a defensive coordinator. But now this is the first time these two match up where they're both head coaches. And when they were at Memphis, they played in back to back weeks. One, I think, was the final game of the season. And then the next one was the conference championship, I believe. And Memphis won both of those games. The first one they won 34 to 24, and the next one they won 29 to 24. And Marcus Freeman had a lot to say around Mike Norvell's ability to scheme things well on offense. He said that he was talking with Al Golden earlier this morning around all the different things that Florida State does. It's very opponent per opponent based, kind of almost opposite of, of Notre Dame. Notre Dame is we're a run first team, we're going to establish the run game faceless opponent, no matter who's in front of us. Florida State's very much like, hey, this defense isn't good necessarily at this. So this week we are going to do this. So in to provide a little context for you, that 2019 team that he was at with Memphis, they ranked eighth in the country in points per game, scored 40.4 points per game. And they also ranked 10th in yards per game at 485.1. Then in 2021, when Marcus Freeman went against him as a defensive coordinator now at Notre Dame, Florida State ended up scoring 38 points that game. So, Which was so frustrating. Because, yeah. like, Notre Dame, was, they were up 38-24. You think they're about to blow the bo- doors off of them, and then Notre Dame calls off the dogs. W- one other aspect, too, of it, Trevor, let me add, is they only – they didn't play – so Marcus Freeman was in that same league beginning in 2017. They didn't play each other in 17 and 18 because Memphis and, and Cincinnati were in – I believe the AAC together at that time, uh, but they didn't play each other. Um, so, like, I, I'm actually gonna I'm, I'm gonna check on that, but I believe Cincinnati was because the Big East was already gone, right? Um, uh, let me just let me just check on that real quick to make sure that I am remembering this correctly. Yeah, they were in the AAC. They were in the AAC East. They were four and eight. They didn't play Memphis that first year. The next year, uh, they they were much better, eleven and two. Uh, but they did not make it to the AAC title game that season. They lost to UCF and, and lost to Temple in overtime, then beat Virginia Tech in a bowl game. And then the next year, uh, Cincinnati was 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 their only loss up to that point in time in the season was to Ohio State. And then they lost back-to-back games. The championship game was much more competitive. The point being, he's seen a lot of film of Mike Norvell. The only the first time he didn't watch film, uh, he, the first time he watched film of Mike Norvell was not okay. We got to play them this this late November and then play them a week later. I mean, he had seen Memphis play for two years before that, so there's going to be a lot of um, um, there's going to be a lot of familiarity there. But he knows 
the kind of football mind that Mike Norvell is. He knows that Mike Norvell is more the guy that led Florida State to a 23-4 and four record than he is the guy that's leading to a 1-8 and eight record. That's, and that's what makes this team somewhat, I don't say dangerous. Like I don't want to try to tell you all that if they bring play their A game and Notre Dame plays their A game that Florida State could win. No, if they both play their A game, Florida State's A game right now is like a C game for Notre Dame. Just because of all the injuries and just all the different things going on with that football team. But it is one of those games where if Notre Dame doesn't come to play, they're not locked in like they were weren't against Northern Illinois, like they were not against Miami of Ohio. You know, like then this game could get a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit hairier than it should be. And he knows that once Mike Norvell kind of gets cooking in a game, his offense rolls. His offense really rolls. So he he un, I think he understands the the uh, the danger of this football team, Trevor. And, and, oh, yeah. you know, I think that the good news for Notre Dame, and this is something else some Coach Freeman talked about, which is relevant to this topic, Trevor, is Notre Dame's getting a lot healthier. And, and I even made a comment. I think I think I wrote this on the message board. I don't remember if it was in that or if it was um, in, in my depth chart. But this is the healthiest the Notre Dame offense will be since the Purdue game because Jordan Faison was banged up in that game. Then Ashton Craig went down in that game. Billy Shrouth went down in that game for the offense. Faison's just now getting back to form. Billy Shrouth is going into a second game. You've got Cooper Flanagan, who's been somewhat limited. He's back to full go now. Like, they're never going to be what they were, to what they could have been or what they were because Ashton Craig's not coming back. You don't have Charles Jagasaw. This is going to be the, the physically healthiest that the Notre Dame offense has been really since the third game of the year when you look at everybody's coming back. And he talked a lot about that today as well, Trevor. Yeah, it, which bodes a lot of excitement. Notre Dame is starting to get healthy at the right time on offense. You and I have talked ad nauseum about what team gets hot, what team starts to get hot at the end of the year. And part of that is being healthy. It's, it's hard to get hot and get in a groove as a football team, especially on offense. If, if your guys are in and out of the lineup and people are unhealthy now, Next task, you've gotten people back up to healthy. Let's keep them healthy, right? But it's good. It, it, it bodes well for Notre Dame. And so Marcus Freeman today in the press conference spoke very highly of Jordan Faison and all the things that he's able to do for the offense, talked about how explosive he is. He's a guy that makes all the right decisions. He does exactly what he's told to do, and he does it at 100%. I believe the term that he uses, you know, some receivers believe that you know, if you run the wrong route or you you don't catch a pass, then that's it for you. And nobody's perfect, but Jordan Faison does everything at 110%, right? So that's something that, I mean, that's that's a football coach's dream, right? Is knowing a guy who's coachable, willing to do those things. Brian, you talked about it last week. He's He's the guy that brings the juice. He's the guy that brings the energy to that room. So a lot of positive things going on for Notre Dame and the offensive line getting healthy with Billy Schrauf going into his second game back is massive for yeah. Notre Dame. We all saw the jump in, in, in the improvement that they'd made against an active defensive line in, in Navy. And now that he has, a, he's essentially now going to be two weeks removed from that game on Saturday. It's going to be exciting to see a much more healthy Billy Schrauf out there on yeah. the left side. Oh the yeah. Line. I want to read that comment that he made. Cause it was a really a great quote. I mean, Marcus Freeman, you know, he like we've said before, one of the criticisms that you could have if that people might have of him, if you believe it to be a criticism, I don't, is that he's a little too honest. So when he says something, you kind of know that's at least when it comes to this type of thing, he's not going to tell you what's going on with a certain player and if there's an injury. But, you know, but like his what he said, he goes, the biggest thing for him with him is what he puts on film and practice and in the game is a guy that does exactly what he's asked to do and really performs at a high level. The way you run routes, just because you don't make the catch or get the ball, doesn't mean you weren't doing 100 percent what you were asked what what we're asking you to do. The way he blocked. Now that he's returning to pretty much full health, we were able to get him the ball last week and create some big plays with him. He's a game changer. He's a great football player. He is tough. Practices at such a high level. Studies the game. He's a huge part of this offense now, and will continue to be a huge part of our team moving forward. He's a valuable member to this program. I, I think getting him back. Riley Leonard and Jaden Greathouse have got a very unique connection in that it's not a volume thing, but whenever Riley, I mean, how many, th you look at Jaden Greathouse's catches. I'm going to actually, ha I'm going to sick you on this, Trevor. This is one of your to-do lists for when we talk, when we talk next, how many of Jaden Greathouse's catches have come on third down? Cause as I'm thinking through his catches on the season, 
And and right now, let's let's look at it, Trevor, because he doesn't have a ton of catches because nobody on this team has a ton of catches right now. But Jaden Greathouse right now has 18 catches on the season. Off the top of my head, six of them are on third down. I think of the third down catch against Texas A&M, just off the top of my head. I can think of that he had a third down conversion against Louisville. He had a third down, big third down conversion, obviously, this past weekend against Georgia Tech. He had a big third down conversion. Uh, was it Stanford? I believe against Stanford as well at home because I remember that little middle. He ran that little middle route. I mean, just off the top of my head, I can think of like five or six times that he's converted on third down. And and so even though it's not high volume, it's clearly when he gets into a pinch, Riley's thinking there's two guys Riley Leonard looks super comfortable throwing the ball to on third down, third and fourth down. Jaden Thomas, Jaden Greathouse. Look for a Jaden on third down, right? And watching him and Jordan Faison connect on Saturday, that's the first time they ever looked like they had any kind of cohesiveness because it's the first time Jordan Faison's been in the lineup with any kind of consistency since the open. He got hurt in the first half against Texas A&M, right? He tried to come back for what was it? it was, I think it was the Miami of Ohio game he tried to come back for, and he was not right. He was he got hurt again, yeah, and then he you – know, maybe it was the Louisville game. Louisville. And he got hurt again, and then he came back for Georgia Tech, and they didn't do anything. I mean, he played like 30 snaps, but he just blocked. He didn't get the ball at all. And then we saw last week, like, there was a concerted effort to say, look, him and Jordan Faison were on the same page. And now that Jordan's finally made some plays with Riley, like, who cares that Jordan Faison made plays last year against Louisville? Who cares that he made play, plays in the in the Sun Bowl for Riley Leonard? Because, like, what? Well, I, I wasn't a quarterback there, so what that have anything to do with me. I haven't worked with this guy. I missed all the spring. He, he wasn't in the spring either. You know, he's playing lacrosse during that period of time, so it's not like they could even throw the ball around. And then he gets banged up first game of the year, and then we haven't been able to build this connection. So to see that kind of happening, I thought was really important as well, Trevor, to, to see that connection. But now you get Faison, you get Great House, Thomas. Clearly he has a connection with Bo Collins. He's starting to get a little bit more comfortable with Chris Mitchell. Now you see why Riley Leonard's starting to spread the ball around a little bit, which I think is a good thing. And and so that was obviously, uh, but but his comments about Jordan Faison were impressive too. But this offense is getting healthier. The defense is never going to be as healthy as it was for the Stanford game, much less you know the rest of the year. But the offense getting healthy can then take away some of the burden of the defense here in the stretch and in the postseason. So that'll be a, a, an interesting part of, of this as well. And of course, Marcus Freeman focused on hey, we've got a. If we're going to, you know, who, what, what type, you know, who is your, somebody asked him something about the type of team they are. Yeah, right. And he was right. And he just talked about running the football. So I was like, well, yeah, that tracks. Cause that's the one thing this team is good at. I mean, and they, they really are good at running the football. They, that needs to be, if you want to put identity as that type of thing, which I don't really think that's an identity. I think that's a preference, but I think what comes from behind that, is is if this Notre Dame team can be the type of team that can go out there and run the ball week after week after week after week, it tells us that this team is getting more and more physical, and that's going to be a that that to me is going to be something that results in them Trev finishing the season on a very high note. Them being the team we think they can be in the final stretch is going to be determined by their ability to do just that, to go out there and say we're going to hammer you, we're going to run it down your throat. And there's not a gosh darn thing you can do about it. Sorry. It's all about building consistency, man. That's what it's all about. I, I mean, it's hard for any team, any offense to be consistent when the lineup is constantly changing, right? I mean, we talk about how you know, Notre Dame's receivers are kind of in and out of the lineup, depending on, you know, Faison's in and out. The offensive line is has been banged up this year. And I mean, <laughs> there was an you could make the argument that there was an offensive line switch up before the first game. You know, like the, the lineup already changed before they stepped foot on the field, right? So it's it's hard to gain any sort of consistency as an offense when your lineup isn't consistent. That's why it's such a big deal that Notre Dame is getting healthy at the right time because that's been everybody's criticism of Notre Dame's offense, mine included, is that there's times where they look great and there's times that they look like it's week one in Denbrock's system again. And – it's because sometimes, depending on the lineup, it was that player's first or second time in a game in Mike Denbrock's system. So them getting healthy is really exciting. Riley's looking to keep building on you know, his chemistry with his guys. Marcus Freeman touched on in his press conference today 
you know, what's the biggest difference you've seen in Riley Leonard? And it was all focused around his confidence. He's a lot more confident in Mike Denbrock. Mike Denbrock's a lot more confident in Riley. You know, Riley's doing better with his receivers, with his decision-making. You know, Marcus Freeman even said it might not always be the right decision, but it's quick, which will – I'm not always going to say always going to eliminate a mistake, but it it makes the odds a lot smaller outside of just holding on to the football and then forcing something where it doesn't belong. So Notre Dame getting healthy is very exciting, especially it's it's coming at the right time, man. It's coming at the right time. College football right now is wide open and it's going to be the most consistent teams that are going to make the deepest runs in the playoff. And that is what Notre Dame has in front of them, which I think why Marcus Freeman overarching theme of the day was we got to be mentally and physically prepared. So it's exciting stuff, man. We've been saying it all week. We were saying it all last week. Month of November is going to be exciting. It's going to be really, really fun.